Let's say you get home at 6 p.m., you've had a bad day at the office, and all you feel like doing is playing five hours of League of Legends and ordering delivery food. Well, firstly, I think that you and I could be friends, but secondly, while that's gonna feel pretty good at the time, come midnight and you're on your fourth loss in a row, you know you're gonna feel like crap and be filled with regret. So now let me play out a different situation where you still get to play 10 ARAMs, maybe order something from the healthy section, but when the queue pops and you select your character, you have basically 60 seconds before the game starts. Here, you could do as many push ups as you can, and then once you've reached your limit, you could sit in a deep squat until the game starts. By the end of the night, you will have completed a couple hundred push-ups and sat in a deep squat for a couple of minutes. This helps with ankle, knee, hip, and back mobility, which is so important for gamers. By the time you go to bed, you'll be in a much better headspace. So while this might be great for strength training, to get your cardio in, you'll want to check out the next method. And I am the VR coach, so maybe I'm slightly biased here, but I truly believe that VR gaming is one of the best ways to get fit and stay active. Not only will VR gaming outperform its traditional counterpart, but you can also really turn up the needle by selecting boxing, rhythm, or dedicated fitness games. And I've already made a top 10 VR fitness games video, which I'll put in the description below. But if you don't have access to a VR headset, then don't worry, I've got you covered with the next three points. So augmented reality is a great way to get fit and stay active. Popular mobile games like Pokemon Go have made it easy for people to incorporate exercise into their daily routines. Unlike traditional video games, AR games require physical movement in order to play, making them perfect for outdoor walking cardio. Dr. Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist who has studied the effect of exercise sunlight and outdoor activities on mental health. He found that exposure to natural light, essentially just going outside and touching grass, can help regulate melatonin production, which can further aid in restful night's sleep as well as improved alertness during waking hours. Backseat gaming has also risen in popularity with the rise of streaming platforms like Twitch and Discord. Sometimes you don't feel like playing yourself, but you still want to watch and talk crap. I don't do this as much as the other methods, but one of my close friends started doing this and I think it's really cool. So what she will do is get on a cheap exercise bike from Kmart and as soon as we queue into a TFT double up game, she sets herself the challenge of biking continuously until we are knocked out. If you don't have any equipment or any friends, then you could just watch your favorite streamer and set yourself a goal of shadow boxing for a set amount of time. And the final method is just to get it out of the way. For some people, it's just gonna be best to go to the gym before you start gaming for the day. Hard limiting yourself to not pick up a controller until you've checked this off. Doing an hour of exercise in the morning can not only provide a physical exercise, but can also improve your mental state by releasing the door phones and reducing the chance of you running it down during your games. I recently saw a really cool version of this in one of Ali Abdel's video, where he described it as choosing your adventure. Basically, each morning when you wake up, you write down your main quest and two to three side quests for the day. So for example, your main quest could be to clock your workout, and your side quest could be have a call with your mom, apply for five jobs, and clean your kitchen. Once you've completed your main and side quest for the day, then you can partake in guilt-free gaming. And as a bonus, then why not challenge yourself to try and burn a certain amount of calories or do this for a certain amount of time using one of the methods above. And if you want to see what this could look like, then I recently took on the challenge of trying to burn 10,000 calories in VR. And you can check that out here.